All right, good morning or whenever time, game design students. I hope you guys are all doing very well. Um, I am continuing the video here. Um, last video uh, was about the top down, the point and click sort of adventure game, right? Um, and they call it top down perspective because we're it's like we're uh, looking down on the world. I guess I didn't explain that in the first video, but that's kind of this genre of game here. And so we created this little map last time. We had two layers. We had a background layer and we had a an obstacles layer. So the background layer was just all this grass and sand and snow. And then we put obstacles like these trees and snowballs and rocks and everything all in the way. To kind of box our player character in. And on, uh, we, it was two different tile maps. Remember on the obstacles tile map, we added a solid behavior. And that's basically as far as we went on the last one. Today, <clears throat> we're going to add in a player character and add in our movement. So what we're going to do is over here in the right, we're going to right click. And we're going to add a layer at the top. We're going to call it player layer. So we have our background layer, our obstacles layer, and now our player layer. And our player layer is just going to go totally over the top of everything. Okay. And the first thing we want to add in is a player box. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click. We're going to add in a sprite. I'm just going to add it in over here. I kind of have this little starting area in the top left. And I'm going to use this paint bucket fill. And you can pick any color. I just kind of have this bright green because it's easy. It stands out. Okay. And then I'm going to click this. See these arrows that are kind of pointing in different directions? This is the resize tool here in my sprite editor. And I want to resize this so it's 50 by 50. Okay. And if I'm keeping my aspect ratio, it should make my width and my height both 50. I'm usually good to keep that aspect ratio thing uh, checked. So I'm going to click OK. And then I can exit out of this. And my little sprite is going to be right there. There he is. Okay. And I'm going to rename this sprite, remember, player box. I don't ever want to just leave things as their default names, right? I renamed these tile maps. I renamed this player box. So when I go over here to the right side <clears throat> with all of my uh, my different assets in my project, I know what they all are. If you have like a hundred sprite, like sprite one, sprite two, sprite three, sprite four, you're not going to be able to keep them straight. So you need to make sure to give them names. It's really important and a name that you're going to understand. So like this is player box. And when we actually get going with this, this player box is going to be invisible. And we're going to actually put a sprite over the top of it that will animate and make everything look nice. But for right now, we're just going to work on this player box. And we need to add a few behaviors to this player box. So in the left panel over here, we're going to click Behaviors. We're going to add a new behavior. First one is Solid, Add. We're going to add another one, Scroll To. And we're going to add one more. And this is our movement now. And we've done a little bit of eight direction movement. We've done bullet movement. We have done platform movement. We've done turret movement. Now we're going to do this one here, which is the move to movement. We're going to click that, and we're going to add it. And so what we're going to do with our, uh, our player sprite, the way you're going to control it is by clicking around on the screen. Now right now, okay, it doesn't do anything. I can click everywhere I want, okay, testing my game, and my guy's not going to move anywhere. That's because I need to add in some events. So we're going to go over and add in some of our first events here in the event sheet. And the first one I want to do is add event. Oh, shoot. I forgot. I forgot the most important part. Sorry, guys. Don't skip past this. Go back to your layout. Double click. And we need to add in a mouse control. So input, we need to add in mouse. Okay. And then we also want to add in keyboard for later. We're not going to use that today in this video. But we want to add in mouse and keyboard. That's our control system for this. And you could do it with a touch, right? If you were designing for a touchscreen game, you could absolutely do it with a touchscreen. But we're doing it with the mouse, OK? So now I go back to my event sheet. And now that I've added in my mouse um, controller here, I can add an event. And I can double click on my mouse here. And I want to say on click, OK? So when I click, and when I click the left mouse button, right, my normal click one, when I just click it once, that's an event. So whenever that happens, I want my game to do the following. I want it to take my player box. And I'm going to scroll down to find the move to commands here. And I want it to move to a position. Okay, And it asks you for an x and y position. So if you've done some geometry or some graphing before in math, you'll understand that x is kind of the, the side to side position, and y is the up and down position. And so if we have an x and a y position, it can tell us exactly where we are. And so what we're going to do is we're going to type in something a little different here. We're going to say mouse.x. So we want it to go to where our mouse is horizontally. And then we also want it to go to where our mouse is vertically, up and down on the y-axis. And so what this is good, then we can just click done. 
And what we, this is going to do is whenever we click the button, it is going to tell our player character exactly where the mouse clicked and it is going to move towards that. So let's test it out and see if it works. Oh, would you look at that? Very nice. Now let's see if it runs into something that happens. Okay, right now it's just passing straight through stuff. So we're going to need to fix that. There's a few things we can do. We can select our player box. And if we go into our behaviors here on the left, we have this stop on solids. And so we should be able to click that there. And so we got stop on, oh, and I clicked away from it. That stop on solids. So let's go and see if that works. We can probably just run into some of these trees or something. Yep. <clears throat> so that's working now. So whenever I hit a solid and I've got to go back, if I keep running into the solid, it'll stop me. Boom. Okay. And luckily we gave those, we gave this a solid behavior and we gave all of our obstacles a solid behavior. So if your guy is running right through the solids, make sure to, that your stop on solids is checked and then make sure that your obstacles have a solid behavior applied to them. Okay. Now we're going to do one more thing here before the next video. And that is we're actually going to add in uh, another sprite. And this is actually going to be our sprite that animates. Okay. And we're going to open up and this is where you want to go to these Ninja adventure um, assets that I linked you on Google classroom. If you go into actor into characters, we have a ton of options. There are seriously a ton. This is the coolest asset pack blue Ninja. Okay. You can see there's all these different Ninja ones. Blue Samurai, boy, I don't even know what these look like. So you can have this little boy that walks around. Cave girl. Okay, maybe you want to do a cave girl. Like there's, I mean, seriously, whatever you want. There are so many options. Um, Dark Ninja, that sounds kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that one. Yeah, I might do that one actually. Yeah, I think I might. Gold Knight, okay, well, never mind. I think Gold Knight might have got me, dude. Black, we're royal, right? The Knights. Gray Ninja, Green Man, Inspector. There's just a normal knight. What's that look like? Yeah, it looks all right. I don't know. I probably should have looked through all of these before. I just saw there were so many when I was testing this game out before. All right, I'm doing the Gold Knight. I think that looks the coolest. And it has all these different animations here. And the one we're going to do right now is just idle. So I'm going to open up idle. And I can zoom in by holding control and just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And you'll see there's four different sprites here. And obviously, we don't want four different sprites. Okay? We just want one. And I just want this one all the way on the left. So I'm going to show you how to basically crop the rest of these out, get rid of them. So I'm going to take my rectangle select here. It's on this, this tool. I want to click that. And what this allows me to do is just select different parts of this thing. And so what I want to do is I want to position it here and I want to select, click and drag very carefully. So I'm getting just the night, right? I don't want a ton of extra white space around him, right? I want to go just as tall and as wide as this night is. And you'll see, I have him selected. And then I'm going to click this up here. Okay. Which is the crop. And when I click that, it brings me down to just this little night guy here. That's all it is. Now I want to resize this and I'm not going to keep the aspect ratio here. I want you to make sure this is not clicked and I'm going to type in 50 and 50. Okay. The reason I did that is because I want this night to be the same size as my player box. If it's not the same size as my player box, it's going to be totally goofed up and I don't want that. So now I can exit out here and you'll see I can zoom in. Okay. And I can even click and drag and put this guy over the player box. They're the exact same size. I have them resized perfectly. Okay. Now what I need to do, go to my event sheet and I'm going to add in another event that makes sure that my little sprite, which I need to rename. I didn't rename it. Oh, you guys, that was almost bad player. Um, I'm, I can just leave it as well. Player, it might not let me do. So I'm going to just do player sprite. So I understand that there's the player box and there's the player sprite. Both of them are the player. I'm controlling them, but one is just basically the mask I'm putting over it. So make sure you rename that. Okay. I'm going to add an event. It is going to be system every tick. So that means every time the system refreshes 60 times per second, I'm going to add an action. I'm going to take my player sprite and I'm going to set position. So I can just search up here, set position to another object. And that object is going to be player box. Okay. And image point zero, um, should be good. All right. And let's actually go make sure that's good. So I'm going to go to my player box, double click it here to open it up. And I'm going to go to this origin point here 
and I want to right click and I want to make sure my origin point is in the middle and it looks like it already was so we're good let's go to my player sprite I want to go to origin point and I want to make sure my origin point is in the middle and it looks like it wasn't so that's actually important we went and did that both origin points are now right in the middle and now if we run this oh one more thing player box we want to make it invisible so we're going to go down we're going to select our player box in the right come over here to the left and we're going to click this initially visible box right here do you see that so now when we start it up the green box is going to be invisible but our player sprite our little knight here the one i picked is going to be following it around so here we are and now my knight is moving around instead of my player box and it should all do the same things like if i run into something it should work and I can come visit all my different areas over here, a little snow area. Wow, look at that, a little forest. Um, so it's working really well there, okay? So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to add some animation so it actually makes it look like he's running, and it's going to make it look like he can face different directions as well. Um, and that is, it's going to be really cool. It's going to look really nice. You guys are going to be happy with your game here. So if you have any questions about this, let me know, um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.